Hello and welcome to Azure Sentinel Setup and Configuration. In this webinar, we will be discussing setting up Azure Sentinel, configuring Azure Sentinel, connecting data sources, there will be a demonstration of all the steps that we went through, and then we will perform a wrap-up. Azure Sentinel requires a log analytics workspace to hold all of its data. So to create a new instance of Azure Sentinel, find Azure Sentinel in the Azure portal. Click the Add button to enable a new instance of Azure Sentinel. If there is not already a log analytics workspace available that you can use, click Create a new workspace. In the Create Log Analytics Workspace page, select either an existing resource group or create a new one. Then, enter the name for your Log Analytics Workspace. This must be a globally unique name and the portal will tell you if that name has already been used. Then, select the region that you want this workspace to be created in. This should be the same region as most of your Azure resources to avoid egress charges. Then you can click Review and Create to continue. You are able to go to the Pricing tier and Tags pages if you wish to enter the information there, but we will not be doing so in this demonstration. If validation has passed, you can click the Create button to create your new Log Analytics workspace. It may take a little while for this workspace to be created. If validation has not passed, go back to the previous tabs to see what errors are there. Once the workspace has been created, select it and then click Add Azure Sentinel to create a new instance using this workspace. Once your Azure Sentinel instance has been created, you will be taken to the Azure Sentinel News and Guides page. This is the only time you will be taken directly to this page. Any other time you come into your Azure Sentinel instance, you will be taken to the Overview page. The News and Guides page has steps that you can take to configure your Azure Sentinel instance. Also note that the navigation for Azure Sentinel is on the left hand side of the page. The first thing we will look at is configuring the log analytics workspace itself. So click settings in the Azure Sentinel navigation menu and then in the new page click workspace settings in the header menu bar. The page that you will see is the log analytics overview page and the sections that we care about are highlighted in the red box. The first setting we will look at is Azure Virtual Machines. This will show a listing of all the Azure Virtual Machines that you have access to, as well as whether or not the Virtual Machine is connected to this workspace, not connected, or connected to a different workspace. Clicking on any of the listings will bring up a new pop-up menu where you can connect the machine if it's not already connected, or disconnect it from a different workspace so that you can connect it to this workspace. You'll want to do this for all the virtual machines in Azure. The next setting we will look at is Windows, Linux, and other sources. This will allow you to ingest information coming from your virtual machines that are not connected to Azure. This will include on-premises and other cloud services. The connected sources will allow you to connect Windows servers, Linux servers, Azure storage, and system center groups. The data section will allow you to determine what information to ingest. This can include Windows logs, Windows performance counters, Linux performance counters, IIS logs, custom logs, and Sysmon. And finally, computer groups will allow you to create groups of dynamic computers that you can use in your queries. Once you have those settings configured, go back to the main Azure Sentinel page and select Data Connectors. This will take you to the Data Connectors page, which will provide you a list of all the available data connectors. As you can see, it's not just Microsoft providing these, as there are other third-party systems as well. If there's a data connector that you need that is not listed, you can use the syslog or CEF data connector to still ingest that data. Select an individual data connector and then click on Open Connector Page to see what the requirements are for that selected data connector. We will now take you through a demonstration of everything that we have just covered. So I'm on the home page of the Azure Sentinel portal. If you do not see Azure Sentinel listed, you can always search for it by typing in Azure Sentinel at the top and then selecting it. As you can see, I already have one instance created, but we're going to go ahead and create another instance. So I click the Add button. And as you see, I have no other Log Analytics workspace available. So I click Create a new workspace. 
I'll select a pre-existing resource group or you can create a new one. I'll give it a name. And you see this name has already been taken. So let me try a different name. I'm going to put my initials in front of it. And that one seems to work. You could also use your company initials or company name. I'm going to select East US since that's where most of my information is stored. I'm going to skip the pricing tier and the tags and go straight to review and create. It's doing its validation. Validation has passed, so I'll click create. Now this may take a little while, so I'm going to pause the video until the workspace has been created. Alright, so that took about 10 seconds. Not too bad. So now I'm going to select my workspace and then click Add Azure Sentinel. This will associate a new Azure Sentinel instance with this workspace. And again, that might take a little while. And you'll notice when you go in, you go to the News and Guides page. This is the only time you'll be taken directly to this page. Any other time you come in after this, you'll go to the Overview page. Now this page gives you some steps that you can take to configure your Azure Sentinel instance. We're going to show you how to do it manually. So first, I'm going to click Settings on this left navigation pane, and it should show me the Azure Sentinel pricing, and up top, I'm going to click Workspace Settings. Now, the part that we're interested in is Connected Data Source over here. So first thing I'm going to do is Azure Virtual Machines. This is showing me a list of all the Azure Virtual Machines that I have access to, and whether it's connected to this workspace or a different workspace, or not connected at all. So you can see my 80 servers connected to a different workspace, the CEF test is not connected at all, and so on. So if I click on one of these, you see I have the option of connect, disconnect if it's already connected, and then I can refresh the view. So unfortunately I know this machine is not running, so I'm not going to connect, but that is how I would connect an Azure Virtual Machine. Next thing we're going to look at are the Windows, Linux, and other sources. First thing is connected sources. These are for non-Azure virtual machines or regular hardware that can be running on premises or in a different cloud provider. So you see you have Windows servers and you have an agent you can download to install and run and then you'll be asked for your workspace ID or a primary and secondary key. I can do the same thing with Linux servers, Azure storage, or system center groups. The data section will tell you what information that you want to ingest. So right now there's no Windows event logs, but I can easily add one. For instance, I can add the setup log. I do a search, I select it, and then click the add button. And you notice it's by default all three levels are selected, but I don't have to select those if I don't want to. I can always uncheck it. But one thing to keep in mind is anytime you make a change, you are going to hit the save button to save your changes. I can also do the Windows performance counters. As you can see, there's none that are enabled by default. However, these are the recommended ones from Microsoft. So I just click Add the selected performance counters. And then here are the ones that have been selected. I just click Save again. I can do the same thing with the Linux performance counters, but I must check this checkbox first to apply to all my machines. I can enable IIS logs. I can do custom logs. That is for any type of log information that does not fit into any of these other areas. For instance, a Linux web server. And I can also do a syslog much the same way where I would click the apply and then do a search for one. So I can select any of these, mail, any of the other ones you saw, click the add button. And again, all the levels are automatically filled in. After I've made all my changes, click Save. Now there's also the computer groups, which will allow you to create a grouping of computers that you can use in your KQL queries that are dynamically updated every time you run your query. We're not going to go into these too much. Once you have all of your options saved for your Log Analytics workspace, we'll go back into Azure Sentinel and click on our data connectors. As you can see, there's a large list of data connectors available. There's 39 listed right now. I have none connected, and there's one coming soon. You can also notice that not all of these data connectors are coming from Microsoft. Here's one from Amazon. 
Here's one from Barracuda, Checkpoint, Cisco, so on and so forth. It's worth pointing out that if you have a data system that's not listed in this list, you can use either the common event format or the syslog servers to get that data into Azure Sentinel. And we're going to look at the Office 365 data connector. So if you click on it, you notice the information over here on the right hand side is populated. It tells me the name, the connection status, who provided it, the last time I received any information, a description of it, again, the last time any data was received. Now for the related content, this says that there's three different workbooks, which are graphical representations of your data, two KQL queries, and 15 analytic rule templates associated with this data connector. Then it also tells me a chart of when the data has been received. In this case, I'm getting two tables filled in, one for the SharePoint, one for the Exchange. Well, there are two different feeds going to the same table. And then it shows where the tables are going to be located. Then I click Open Connector Page to do the actual connection. Again, here's the only information we just saw. Here's the instructions. Let's check in to see if I have the proper workspace permissions and if I have the tenant permissions. Now because I do, I can go down here, select which one of the feeds I want. In this case, I want both and then click Apply Changes. This bottom one, Previous Connected Tenants, shows me that there's no tenants that I have connected before. Now this page is going to be different depending on what data connector you have selected. Now if I click Next Steps, this tells me what I can do next. In this case, it shows me the three workbooks that are associated with this data connector, two sample queries telling me how to get information, and then a list of the relevant templates. I can click on this Create Rule button here to automatically go out and create a rule based on the template provided by this data connector. So I can click through here, see all the information that's being filled in by default, make any changes I want, then I can click Create. So this rule will be generated automatically for me. And that concludes our brief demonstration of everything that we've seen in the PowerPoint so far. Insight has a team of over a thousand engineers focused on Azure and are helping organizations simplify and enhance security across their diverse IT environments. To learn more on how Insight can help your organization, book a demonstration today. Thank you for attending this webinar. For more information, contact us at the link below.